Hello. Today I'm going to read from Sources for America's History, edited by Kevin Sheets, printed by Bedford C. Mines Press. This reading is called well, Anthropologist Undermines Racial Stereotypes. Frank Boas. Unlike the first decade of our century, the opinion that race determines culture had been, in Europe at least, rather a subject of speculation of amorous, amateur historians and sociologists than a foundation of public policy. Since that time, it has spread among these masses. Slogans like, blood is thicker than water, are expressions of its new emotional appeal. The early concept of nationality has been given a new meaning by identifying nationality with racial unity and by assuming that national characteristics are due to racial descent. It is particularly interesting to note that the anti-Semitic movement in Germany of the first time of 1880, it was not the Jew as a member of the alien race who was subject to attack, but the Jew who was not assimilated to German national life. The present policy of Germany is based on an entirely different foundation, for every person is supposed to have a definite, unalterable character according to his racial descent, and is, this determines his political and social status. This was a talk given in 1911. The conditions are quite analogous to the status assigned the Negro at an earlier period, when licentiousness, shiftless laziness, lack of initiative were considered as racially determined, unescapable qualities of every Negro. It is a curious spectacle to see that serious scientists, wherever free to express themselves, have on the whole been drifting away from the opinion that race determines mental status. Accepting, however, these biologists who have no ap appreciation of social factors because they are captivated by the apparent hereditary determinism of morphological forms. While among the uniform public to which Unfortunately, a number of powerful European politicians belong. Race prejudice has been making and still is still making unchecked progress. I believe it would be an error to assume that we are free of this tendency. If nothing else, the restrictions imposed upon members of certain races abridged their right to own real estate, the tendency in apartment houses, memberships at clubs, to the right to visit hotels and summer resorts, to admission to schools and colleges shows at least that there is no abatement of old prejudices directed against Negroes, Jews, Russians, Armenians, or whatever they may be. The excuse that these exclusions are compelled by economic considerations or by the fear of driving away from schools or colleges other social groups is merely an acknowledgement of the widespread attitude. The Negro problem, as it presents itself in the United States, is from a biological viewpoint not essentially different from those just discussed. We have found no proof of an inferiority of the Negro type could be given, except that it, would, it seems barely possible that perhaps the race would not produce quite so many men of high genius as other races, while there was nothing at all that could be interpreted as suggesting any material difference in the mental capacity of the bulk of the Negro population as compared to the bulk of the white population. There will undoubtedly be endless numbers of men and women who will be able to outrun their white competitors and who will do better than the defectives whom we permit to drag down and retard the healthy children of our public schools. Ethnological observation does not countenance the view that the traits observed among our poorest Negro populations are in any sense racially determined. A survey of African tribes exhibits to our view cultural achievements of no mean order. 
to those unfamiliar with the product of na Native African art and industry, a walk through one of the ma large museums of Europe would be a revelation. Few of our American museums have made collections that exhibit this subject in any way worthily. The blacksmith, the woodcarver, the weaver, the potter, all these produce wares original in form, executed with great care, and exhibiting that love of labor and interest in the results of work, which are apparently so often lacking among the Negroes in our American surroundings. The power of organization is, as illustrated in the government of native states, is of no mean order. And when wielded by men in great, of great personality has led to the foundation of extended empires. All the different kinds of activity that we consider valuable in the citizens of our country may be found in the original Africa, Aboriginal Africa. <coughs> Neither is the wisdom of the philosopher absent. A perusal of any of the collections of African proverbs that have been published will demonstrate the homely practice practical philosophy of the new world, which is often proof of sound feeling and judgment. It would be out of place to enlarge on this subject because the essential point that anthropology can contribute to the practical discussion of the adaptability of the new world is a decision of the question of how, how far the undesirable traits that are presently undoubtedly found in our Negro population are due to racial traits and how far are they due to social surroundings for which we are responsible. <laughs> to this question, anthropology can give the decided answer that the traits of African culture as observed in the Aboriginal home of the Negro are those of a healthy prim primitive people and a considerable degree of personal initiative with a talent for organization and imagine with imaginative power, with technical skill and thrift. Neither is a warlike spirit absent in the race. It is proved by the mighty conquerors who overthrew states, founded new empires, and by the courage of the armies that followed the bidding of their leaders. There is no evidence whatsoever that would stigmatize the Negro as of weaker build, or as subject to inclinations and powers that are opposed to our social organization. An unbiased estimate of the anthropological evidence so far brought forward does not permit us to countenance the belief in the racial inferiority which would unfit an individual of the Negro race to take his part in modern civilization. We do not know of any demand made on the human body or mind in modern life that anatomically or ethnologically evidence would prove to be beyond his powers. The traits of the American Negro are adequately explained on the basis of a history and social status. The tearing away from the African soil and the consequent complete loss of the old standards of life, which were replaced by the dependency of slavery and by all it entails, followed by a period of disorganization and by mere severe economic struggle against heavy odds, are sufficient to explain the inferiority of the status of the race, without falling back upon the theory of hereditary inferiority. In short, there is every reason to believe that the Negro, when given facility and opportunity, will be perfectly able to fulfill the duties of citizenship as well as his white neighbor. Our tendency to evaluate an individual according to a picture that we form of the class to which we assign him, although he may not feel any inner connection with that class, is a survival of a primitive form of thought. The characteristics of the members of the class are highly variable, and the type that we construct from the most frequent characteristics supposed to belong to the class is never more than an abstract hardly abstraction hardly ever realized in a single individual, often not even a result of observation, but often an often heard tradition that, that determines our judgment. Freedom of judgment can be attained 
only when we learn to estimate an individual according to his own ability and character. Then we shall find, if we were to select the best of mankind, that all races and all nationalities would be represented. Then we shall treasure and cultivate the variety of forms that human thought and activity has taken, and abhor, as leading to complete stagnation, all attempts to impress one pattern of thought upon the whole nations or even upon the whole world.